Kauhane and Karen Palena Nakasone. They will be presenting on Aloha Aina. Aloha Kakaliakakako. Good morning, everyone. We are from the Department of Education. We're with the Hawaiian Studies Program in the Office of Hawaiian Education. Of course, she did mention our educational specialist, Kuulei Makua, our resource teacher, Karen Nakasone, and myself, Keola Kauhane, another resource teacher as well. We'd like to say a big mahalo for joining us to share Aina Aloha, a set of competencies to help educators incorporate Hawaiian language, culture, and history into their content. Mahalo for the invitation to be here, uh, Kamemel, to share Aina Aloha. Now, our work comes out of Ohe's WeWai. I want to uh, emphasize that the Office of Hawaiian Education does not mean Hawaiian education for Hawaiians only. Our goal as an office really is to ground education in Hawaiian ways of knowing so that all in our system may thrive. Hawaii is what is common to all of us, so it makes sense to teach through this place, regardless of race, ethnicity, or where one is from. We will be using the chat feature, uh, as mentioned earlier this morning, for an aloha circle. So using the chat feature, if you could enter three things. First one is your name. The second one is your organization or affiliation you're with. And then the third one is your aina. Uh, it could be where you come from or uh, where you're at right now or any special place to you. So if you could take uh, some time to enter this into the chat and also if you'd like to scroll through the chat to see who else is joining us and where they are from. So we'll give you some time to All right, so you can see everyone doing that. Mahalo very much. If you haven't already done so, please continue to do that. I would like to go over the agenda for today. So our agenda is Mo'olelo. Following the Mo'olelo, we'll, we'll go over Aina Aloha. And next, we do opportunities to engage Ohana and place using Aina Aloha. And of course, at the very end, we'll do a post manao in the chat. Mahalo, I see everyone entering uh, their names and their roles and their Aina. Today is about sharing Aina Aloha. How might connection to place impact learning? We're gonna give you 30 seconds of think time. So our next thing we're asking you to place in the chat is how might connection to place impact learning? We okay, give about 30 seconds. At the end of those 30 seconds, we're gonna ask if anyone would like to share out. Uh, and if you do wanna share out, we ask that you unmute your microphone so that you can speak and everyone can hear you. I'll give you 10 more seconds and we'll ask for any volunteers that would like to share at this time. All right, if you would like to share at this time your manao, how my connection to place impact the learning. Let me try and get a few. Aloha, I'll go ahead and go. Um, Mahalo. My name is, uh, is Miley. I live on the big island in Kohala. Um, so for us, we have. Um, we really, for us, it's the Aina of where Kamehameha was born. So we really have them understand this land base. Um, Cause I also work for Kamehameha schools. So for us, it's 
them understanding it's just not a statue that lives in our town, but who he is as a person. So, and we really start to talk about um, what, where the different parts of his life took place and what he did in these different um, sections of our Aina. So for us, we really want them to know who they are, where they come from, and what Aina they come from. Um, and all our kids that go to our school are all in Kohala. So they really have them understanding who they are, where they come from, and they come from multiple generations from Kohala. So they really get to understand not just who they are, but who their grandparents were and great grandparents were also. Thank you. Mahalo maile, eo Kohala. Maybe we'll take two more people. Anyone else would like to share? And then we're gonna move on with the rest of our program. Aloha no, um, I, I was I wasn't going to speak because you know already Muku Keave, right? Kohala, but anyway, I'm Kalakehe um elementary and for me it's very um simple because to me simple is easy and for me it's being present present and all that that implies present aloha mahalo pohai thank you for sharing we'll take one last person before we move on anyone else would like to share If not, then we'll move on to our next uh, section. So I'd like to turn this part over um, for our next section to Karen. Mahalo. Aloha mai Um So again, like Keola said, this work comes out of the Department of Education. And um, the, the title of the work that we're sharing is Aina Aloha, and Aina Aloha literally means beloved land. And it's a reminder that A'o and traditional models of education um, is an exchange, just like ha, the breathing. Uh, so we'll be looking at events that have led to um, what we see and experience in our current system and how Aina Aloha um, provides a way to reconnect education to our Hawaii roots. So in traditional models of A'o, um, Hawaii is what connects us all. So learning about and through Hawaii makes sense for us and those, uh, and those that we serve, and, um, especially our keiki. So if we look back to traditional models of A'o, or teaching and learning, um, to see what we can learn from our kupuna, um, in Ahupua'a systems, teaching and learning was embedded in one's nohona, a way of living, and in our language and culture. Uh, learning was meaningful and purposeful in order to sustain and provide for the physical, spiritual, and emotional well-being of our communities. And there was no separation between what we live and what we learned. Um, our kupuna were aina literate. Um, they could read our environment. Yeah? And um, yeah? learning was not confined to one source of knowledge or one place of learning. Um, our kupuna had an intimate, personal, deep connection and relationship with Aina. Um, they understood the systems, the cycles, the rhythms, patterns, movements, breathing of our Aina. As we move towards the 1920s, with the arrival of missionaries and the introduction of print or written language, um, our kupuna were able to transfer those literacy skills they mastered um, by reading environments to print. And by 1834, there was a 91 to 95 percent literacy rate in the Hawaiian Kingdom. Um, in 1840, Kawikeuli established our public age education system with the intention of bridging um, the two worlds. Um, and as we move through the years, an unintentional impact was disconnected learning. Our learning was no longer connected to community or aina. So that is partly. Um, what this work of Aina Aloha um, is, is to, to rebridge learning to ohana and to communities again. Um, from, the 18, 
from 1840 and the establishment of our public education system, there were several events in our history that have caused the uh, intentional and an unintentional disconnect of Hawaiian language and culture we currently experience in some of our education system. We see the overthrow of our Hawaiian kingdom, the banning and punishment of our kuna for speaking olala Hawaii in public and private schools, and the annexation of Hawaii. Teaching and learning shifts from being part of our nohona and is no longer connected to our language and culture. We see a shift in learning environments, um, moving from learning from and on our aina and in our communities to schoolhouses and within classrooms, again, disconnected from aina. Uh, with the Hawaiian Renaissance of the 1970s, we experience a resurgence and pride in our language and culture and advocacy that leads to the establishment of programs such as Hawaiian Studies and Kayapuni in our public education system. So fast forwarding to 2015, the Office of Hawaiian Education is established and we see the beginnings of Aina Aloha. Uh, in 2015, in addition to um, an amended board policy, uh, the Office of Hawaiian Education is established and Naho Pena or Oha is passed. Um, and in response to the board policy um, and the amendments and the creation of OHE, uh, the Hawaiian Studies Program begins the development of Aina Aloha. Um, I briefly mentioned um, Naho Pena o or Ha and Aina Aloha, so I'm going to hand it over to Kuule, uh, who's going to share the connection between content and context. Kuule. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karen. Um, we're super proud to be a part of our Department of Education and super part of the work that the department is doing in terms of integrating Hawaii content and Hawaii context into our system. Um, as Karen said, Aina Aloha is a way for us to think about how do we provide content for our state system that allows us to, to contextualize learning to Hawaii and strengthen the sense of outcomes that we see in Naho Pena Ao or Ha. And while we will not be diving deeper into Naho Pena Ao or Ha during this particular presentation, our colleague who is the Ha specialist out of the Office of Hawaiian Education is doing an 11 o'clock session on Naho Pena Ao. And so if you would like to learn more about the work of Naho Pena Ao, we invite you to attend her session at 11 o'clock today. Ao, as Karen said, teaching and learning happens all around us all day long. We validate the thinking and the application of moving beyond contemporary classroom spaces or four walls back to a design for teaching and learning in multiple learning places and spaces beyond just our schools, including our neighborhoods, our homes, and our community. By designing in this way, we reconnect and reacquaint ourselves to Aina, that which feeds and sustains us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. In that same way, we reconnect and we rethink about how we think of sources of knowledge or kum beyond just teachers in our traditional classroom settings. Aina is our best teacher, and if we humble ourselves, empty ourselves, learn, listen, connect, feel, and watch what our environment will teach and share with us, they too are our first sources of knowledge. We don't have to say to this group in this Ohana Engagement Conference, because you all know and validate here that Ohana and caregivers are our first teachers, and they too should be engaged in a part of our students' learning journeys. And so in this digital age where we find ourselves during this particular time of, of COVID, engaging digitally or virtually to connect in a conference setting like we are today, or with our keiki as they connect to their school settings, we also think about how we leverage technology to connect us and to help us solve real world problems in our community so that we can be better stewards of our islands and be mindful to balance technology so that our students still continue to feel connected to Aina, to others, in ways that strengthen their ha, or their sense of belonging, responsibility, excellence, aloha, total well-being, and Hawaii in multiple learning spaces and from multiple learning sources. And so as we dive deeper into Aina Aloha, the competency and the tool, I'm going to turn it back over to Karen, who is going to take us through these next couple of slides. OK. 
Okay, so yeah, as Kutle mentioned, Aina Aloha is, is a tool for, for classroom teachers. Um, but, but at the same time, it validates and it, its intention, again, is to reconnect teaching and learning to families and to communities. So to that end, um, Aina Aloha was developed in order to provide educators with a tool um, that strengthens Pilina, our relationship to Aina, and, and roots what we teach to Hawaii to strengthen one's sense of identity or sense of breath, and Kuule mentioned that, um, to our environment, physical, human, and spiritual. Um, one of the things that we were mindful of in developing Aina Aloha was metaphor and ho'ailona um, from kupuna. Um, so when we landed on Aina Aloha, ha, ha has a metaphor of breath. Aina Aloha has a metaphor of roots. Aina Aloha helps us recognize that our identities are grounded and shaped by places that raise us and by rooting our content to Hawaii and contextualizing learning to Hawaii, we strengthen our ha and our ability to be stewards of our island home. Roots and veins serve the function of carrying nutrients and or oxygen to plants or the body. And in the same way, um, a'a serves to revitalize and reconnect all stakeholders to our aina. It also reminds us of our connectivity and that we sit in generations. So we mahalo our kupuna and remember our kuleana to leave a positive legacy for generations to come. And as you can see in the this, in this slide there, um, the a'a of, of kalo and that, um, and that roots can take place even in the most difficult or um, difficult of places. As you can see in the slide there, there are three main concepts to aloha aina, aina aloha kalamai, uh, kuana ike, honua, and olelo hawaii. Um, Kuule is going to go into those concepts a little more in depth, but under Kuana Ike, we talk about um, Ahupua'a, um, Wahipana, Mahalo and Ho'ihi, and under Honua, we talk about Pono and Kuleana, to Honua. And uh, under Olal Hawaii, Olal Hawaii is embedded in, in all three of those concepts and embedded in our Nohona. So that was an important concept um, to embed into this framework as well. Um, we, also, we also put to paper a learning cycle. Um, and, and each of these kumuhana or these topics are designed around a learning cycle that reminds us that learning is cyclical or spirals, much like the growth of a kukui tree. There's no beginning and end. Pua or seeds become kupu, who turn into liko, then pua, and back to hua, and the cycle repeats itself. We all as teachers, parents, students, enter this learning cycle at, at different places based our, on our ohana, our experiences and our perspectives. That diversity is honored through this learning cycle, which we borrow from the work from Dr. Keiki Kawaii'a and her work with Moinaha. Um, I'm gonna hand it over back to Kutle now, who's gonna talk a little bit about ohana engagement and Aina Aloha. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Karen. Um, as we find ourselves in unprecedented times, being quarantined with Ohana and re-engaging with our students learning as they learn from home and we take as Ohana new roles in helping them to get online, maybe even engage with the content to facilitate some of the learning that's happening through their schools. We as educators are planning for different models of delivering instruction and assessment. And we collectively as educators and in partnership with Ohana, find ourselves with a great opportunity to ho'i or to return to a connectivity for teaching and learning through our places, through our host culture and language, and as connected to Ike Ohana. Aina Aloha offers us one way to think about leveraging our homes and communities as learning environments and our, our ohana and the ike of our ohana as kumu or sources of knowledge, just like um, Aina community and ohana. As Karen said, there are three competencies or three concepts attached to Aina Aloha, the first of which is Olalo Hawaii. Um, you can see on pages five and six of Aina Aloha um, that there is the learning cycle for Olalo Hawaii. 
Hawaii. Um, as Karen mentioned, Olalo Hawaii is cross-cutting. It is embedded throughout all of Aina Aloha, and we cannot talk about Kuana Ike or talk about Honua without also including Olalo Hawaii. We also recognize that its usage is highly dependent on the teacher and student readiness and our ohana readiness. At the Kubo stage for every one of our competencies, it was important for us to honor that our students come with kupuna, they come with ohana, and they come with values, and they come with an identity that's shaped by their place. And in that way, the kupu stage of every competency begins with honoring who our students are and who our teachers are. And so in the kupu stage of Olalo Hawaii, it is about understanding the significance and importance of language. And in the hua stage, it's about understanding how Olalo Hawaii shapes one's worldview. Um, because this is a Ohana engagement uh, conference, we really looked inward into our Ohana. And so I humbly share my personal family experiences here with you all as examples of how Aina Aloha might show up naturally in what you all are doing as Ohana and the ways that it has showed up in what we're doing as a Ohana Makua, where we live here on Oahu in Waimanalo. Um, we'll see pictures of my three girls, and so I introduce them to you here, Hazel, Bella, and Lily Makua. Um, COVID has really allowed for my ohana to pause, um, to stay home, to be connected with each other through quarantine. Um, and some of the activities that you're seeing are made possible because of the amount of time that we've had to be together as family. Um, I know that I'm not the only one that has family um, family stories to share around how Olalo Hawaii shows up in your homes or in the work that your organization is doing. And so I ask you to share those in the chat as we collectively build our toolkit and continue to see the ways in which Olalo Hawaii shows up in our homes. Um, for us, one of my three girls, it happens to be my baby girl, um, the Muli Loa, Lily Kavehi. Um, she attends an immersion school. And because of her immersion experience and her ability to Olalo Hawaii, uh, her worldview has been shaped by her connection to Hawaiian language. Um, one day, not during quarantine, uh, we were driving out. We live on the east side, as I said, and we were driving out to um, Eva side here on Oahu to attend uh, a baby shower for my brother. Um, and as we're riding in the car, it begins raining, and she asks, me the name of the rain. And so we engage in a dialogue around, you know, what are the characteristics of rain and why do rains have different names? And in that way, she becomes the teacher for my older two daughters and she gets to be the leader of that conversation. As we move out of Ko'olaupoko and we move into the Kona Moku, she begins to talk about the districts. And she says, mommy, are we in Kona? And I said, yes, baby, we're in Kona, right? And she can see at the end of Moanalua, she's reading the signs and the highways, and she's making connections to stories that she's learning in school and the characteristics of the Aina. She tells me, mommy, I know that we're in Eba because I see Pu'uloa and I can see the red dirt, right? And so in this way, her deep relationship and connection to our Aina here on O'ahu and the Mo'olalo and the stories and the Kuanaike that has been shaped by both our home as well as her schooling experiences allows us to experience O'lalo Hawaii as a family. Um, you can see here, we engaged with one of the Kamehameha schools, opportunities of Lea Nue Nue, and we made kites, lupe at home, and then we took it out into our yard and we flew it in the Limu Lipu'ufu'u winds of Waimanalo. Um, and then we've harvested olana and talked about the different parts of the olana as we continue to think about our well-being during this time of COVID. Kuana Ike is the second competency within Aina Aloha, and there are three kumuhana um, or topics with Kuana Ike. Um, they are Ahupua'a, Vahipana, and Mahalo and Ho'ihi. We use Ahupua'a as a metaphor for systems and cycles. Vahipana is about knowing the mo'olalo of our storied and sacred spaces and how they've changed over time so that we can think about pono stewardship of these places. And mahalo and ho'ihi are about our contributions to the well-being of places and people. 
And so in the same way, I invite you to share the ways in which your organization or you in your own way as Ohana are incorporating kuwana ike, ahupua'a, vahipana, halo ihi in the chat as we build our collective repository or vaihona of kuwana ike strategies. Um, I humbly share mine here. As said earlier, COVID really allowed for us to pause as a family. Days were blazing and we found ourselves really caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, waking up early to get where we needed to be and coming home late after long days at school or work and after extracurricular activities with really little time to be at home, in our place and with each other. And so on the end of March hit and we found ourselves gifted back the time that we lost in transit and transition. We decided to use our early mornings to attend to our well-being as a family. We were ma'a to waking up early and we found gratitude in our ability to access the beach so easily. And so we woke up at the same time as usual and then what we thought was going to be physical exercise actually became a strengthened sense of connection and belonging to our place we were able to stop and be present to Nana and Ho'olohe, to watch and to listen to our environment, to see the rising of the sun day in and out, and to be thankful for new days and new beginnings. We got to notice what was happening in connection to our moon and how on some days we could see the sun and the moon at the same time and became more cognizant of the rhythms and the cycles of our moons as it was connected to our aina. There was a time back in April and you all probably saw it on your islands or in your communities where even before we got to the Kahakai, we could smell the limu. Um, and to our surprise, when we got there, our, the, the whole shore was completely covered in limu and it lasted for over a week and so we did lots of exploration and research and um, thinking and talking and reflection about that experience as a family. We greeted the sun as it rose each morning and in that learning space and from this learning space uh, we watched the tides ebb and flow. We adjusted our routes accordingly when the tide was high or the tide was low. Um, we made sure that we took some time out to Malama and to care for this space and all of this we learned from our keiki and they learned from us. Uh, we talked about the stories, the systems and the cycles and the rhythms of Waimanalo, our place, while remembering to be thankful and to be proper stewards of our home, our hale, and our larger community. The final competency within Aina Aloha is Honua. And Honua has two kumuhana. Um, they are Pono and Kuleana. Pono is about understanding the balance of Akua, Aina, and Kanaka. And Kuleana is about recognizing our accountability, our privilege, and our responsibility to our island homes and to our communities. Again, I'll pause for a moment to give some examples of what that ohana engagement looked like here in Waimanalo for my ohana, but I know that you all have lots of stories from your organization standpoint and or from your own individual ohana standpoint. For us at home, one of the things that we started before, but we've always had to stop because we couldn't give it the proper care that it deserved, um, was starting a mala. And so because of COVID, um, we've been spending a lot of time at home and we were able to um, rejuvenate um, this project for ourselves. And so back in April, we began to cl clean and prepare the space and we flat planted a few things that we already had in our yard. We started really small with Kalo and Olana and as we worked together, we created a shared Kole that was fostered and nurtured daily over time. And from that time, my girls have started to take the majority of the koleana for this space. They wake up every morning wanting to feed and talk to their plants, and we do the same in the afternoon, just like mommy and daddy think about preparing meals for them. Um, and in that way, they have now a shared koleana for something beyond themselves in that they practice laulima, malama, and olalohava'i through this mala space. 
And from that time, we, we've added to our garden and we've been able to see the reciprocity in this relationship through harvesting. Uh, we've added some zucchini, some corn, some bell peppers, and even some flowers just to ho'onani nani of the space. As a makua and as ohana educators or as members of ohana, I know you can all appreciate this, that it's so, it, it makes me so proud as a parent that I get to stand back and watch how through this space and from our aina, my girls are growing as, as kanaka, as kaikamahine, into vahine, and they're deepening and strengthening and applying our values and our mindsets and our kuana ike by being in service to our honua, to our place. Um, we're starting with our place here at home. We extend it when we find opportunities to be in service to our larger Waimanalo community. And it makes me very proud to be able to share our example and I'm so excited to see the examples that you all have shared in the chat as well. And so I'm going to turn it back over to Karen, who is going to share some of the ways that through our work in the Office of Hawaiian Education, we have been purposefully and meaningfully reconnecting to Ohana. Okay, mahalo kutle for those beautiful, beautiful examples. Um, and that's one of the things that we as Office of Hawaiian Education highly values is that ohana engagement and um, honors that ohana is, is our and our students and our keiki's first teachers. Um, and so we're hopeful that this time of COVID is going to help us as a DOE system um, come closer to families. Uh, one example of how we've partnered to give ohana access to Aina Aloha um, beyond just what our teachers are doing is through a new collaboration we have with Napua Noeo. Uh, Napua Noeo is a branch uh, or sits under um, Native Hawaiian Student Services and the university system. And they've created this program called Mo'olelo and a Lullaby. Um, in this Mo'olelo and a Lullaby, a reader um, reads a story, a Hawaiian story, and um, it is accompanied by um, a mele, sometimes mele, sometimes hula. And the first one they had mele and hula and the keiki get to engage in the mele and the hula, uh, which is based on the puke or the, or the book that was the story that was read. Um, our next one is gonna come up on, uh, on September 28th. There are 200 slots that, that we were able to create, open up for DOE and Napua Noia already had to, to already had 75 slots set up. So there are 275 spaces. Um, those slots right now are already already full, but there will be others coming up. I think our next puke, our next mo'olelo is gonna be no keia. And we'll be sending, if, you, if you're interested, then let us know and we'll uh, send you information for that. And I believe they also post on Facebook. They announce via Facebook as well. Um, other opportunities or resources that OHE tries to provide is our OHE hub. Um, there are um, resources on the hub for um, connecting to um, Hawaiian Studies, our Hawaiian Studies program in general, um, our Kayapuni program, our Hawaiian Immersion program, and HA or Naho Pena'ao. I think Kutle is pulling that up right now. Um, you'll, on that hub, you'll also see all his philosophy and our, um, our theory of change. And um, as long as, as, as well as all the resources that we have posted up there. Um, if you click on the link to the Hawaiian Studies program, um, you will see the, the resources for Ike Ohana as well. Um, during the time of COVID, we, we realized that it was such an opportunity for families to engage. So we, um, we posted some links there um, to resources for Ike Ohana. And if you look at our Hawaiian Studies resource matrix, um, those of you who are wishing to strengthen your Olelo Hawaii, we have resources for Olelo Hawaii and also connections to um, community other community resources out there that you can reach out to and engage with. I know there are several community organizations who are offering virtual huaka'i, um, so you can check them out as well. And so we can take our keiki back out on Aina, even if we cannot physically be back on Aina. And there you see the, the link for Hawaiian Studies, Ulukau, um, Hawaii Olela Hawaii resources, and also there are links um, for resources um, if, you wish, if you wish to contact OHE um, directly and get specific resources, um, those links are there as well. 
the recordings or oh, those those um, Leo Hawaii recordings are amazing um, recordings of kupuna um, from the early 1900s um, all the way up to um, all the way up to current. You can hear Mana Leo speaking on those recordings. So as we there are um, there are several apps as well to, um, if you wish to strengthen your Olelo Hawaii. Yes. So as we as we start to um, close out our time together, I'm going to hand it over to Keola, who's going to who's going to uh, begin to close us out. Aloha, uh, thank you, Kalena. Uh, so if you have any questions um, and you'd like to stick around, it looks like we're ending a little bit early, uh, so you can stick around to ask any questions or if you wanna just make uh, connections. Um, we also wanted to share our resources. So as Kalena had mentioned, we do have the main OHE hub landing page. Uh, it was also posted, uh, you see it in, in your screen, it was also posted in the chat, uh, so you could go there. Uh, as one of our resources that we offer, another one is our Hawaiian Studies Matrix as well. So you can see that as well on your screen um, as two possible resources. Um, what we'd like for you to do uh, at this time is to please post in the chat a uh, one word manao on what is resonating with you. So after listening to our presentation, if you could uh, present one word uh, manao or thought on what is resonating with you, All right? And uh, we'll leave that open uh, if you could do that. Um, and I would like to now uh, give it back to Kuule to um, do our finishing uh, section for you. Mahalo y'all. Yeah, yeah. So please continue to post in the chat what's resonating with you, uh, ways in which you might like to connect with us or stay connected with us as the Office of Hawaiian Education and Hawaiian Studies Programming. Aina Aloha really, as we've shared, offers us one way to think about rooting our content to Hawaii and designing for multiple learning environments, much like what we talked about today, and to en encourage and engage multiple sources of knowledge, and in particular, the ike of our ohana. What we know is that our kupuna taught us that learning should be connected and have purpose like flowers in a lay. And as always, we think about this time we think about the ohana we engage or the ohana that we are part of. As educators, we do designing for learning that is connected to Hawaii, our place, and contextualized by our island home. And so we mahalo you for being a part of our Aina Aloha. We have some minutes time for our question and answer. Um, if you would like to get in touch with us, here is our email and our contact information. Um, and if there were Questions that might have been posted in the chat. Um, I'll invite our, our facilitators or our co-facilitators of um, Luana and Missy to help us guide us through a question and answer. I think there was one question around readiness for Olala Hawaii. And really our thinking behind that Olala Hawaii strand was everybody comes with some Olala Hawaii, even if it's just a place names, um, names of our streets, names of our wahi, names of our places. Everybody comes with aloha, mahalo. Everyone comes with some Olala Hawaii. So the thinking was to just strengthen what you already have. And as a teacher, you teach what you don't know, what you don't know. So you just teach what you what you do know. And and likewise, if um, if if our readiness is very high, but our hamana readiness is very low, then then we adjust, right? Um, we adjust to um, the readiness of both the, the the teacher and the student. So mahalo for that question. Yeah, we saw posted in the chat. Oh, I love that whole ulu. There's ike. It's a lot of ohana. Um, malama, ao, I think I saw a piha there maybe, learning and doing, yes, which is that, which is that, um, uh, makahana kaike, yeah. Yeah, so we, so we encourage you to, um, um, 
not only for yourself, but uh, for, for families that you are in contact with, uh, uh, to remind one another that, um, that family learning is education, that it is valuable learning, and it is, um, it is our, our children's first, um, first source of learning, first source of education, therefore the most important because uh, we are the ones that they are in contact with the longest. Okay. Oh, mahalo nui for sharing.